Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an RCL bridge from Philips called PM6300. This one is from about 1965. It is tube based. There's of course this indicator tube as you can see right here. And then there is a, a double a triode doing the amplification. I believe that is the, the thing uh, that is inside this unit, <laughs> more or less. And um, the funny thing is it doesn't really contain a, of an oscillator. It's using mains frequency as the oscillator. And we got seven ranges for some of the things like capacitance. Right, you got six ranges for resistance and only five ranges for inductance, as you can see right here. And so that is, of course, the range selector and all that kind of stuff. We got a little bit of funny thing with phase and sensitivity. And um, oh, yeah, the test connector here. Don't you just love that? So this is a three in one kind of connector. So if you push it, see, is this push release? So that's real smart if you want to access stuff real fast, right? And then you can of course screw stuff in and you can use bananas. So that's three things in one go. Just like a little kinder egg, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> Can you see how nice and shiny it is? Well, I can still see a little bit of dirt up there. I spent a long time trying to clean this. Oh man, it was dirty. And you're going to see a little thing here on the top. You can see all this a thick layer of old goobity goop. And this, this is more or less how the entire front was looking. And this is how it looked. Nasty. Yeah, we should probably open and inspect a little bit before we power it up. Now you believe me, it was dirty outside. Yep, it's definitely also dirty inside. <laughs> this is bad. And... Really? Let me take a little. Yep. It is in there somewhere. The potentiometer. But I plan to clean it up a little bit. Oh, we got some nasty fungus growing on that one. Ooh, it's super, super nasty. So yeah, that is definitely the state of the internal parts here. Super, super dirty. And the thing with all this uh, dirt, as you see here, the open switches, potentiometers here. And they're quite open here as well. So some of this is probably also inside potentiometer you can imagine oh yeah 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 this is nasty exactly like i said one dual triode and that is the indicator tube oh absolutely lovely i love these phosphor glowing indicator tubes and it even says here ecc 80 three and uh, that is the type number pm 6300 and uh, yeah we could probably uh, adjust the mains voltage i mean we are in 230 something at the moment so maybe it's better to go 245 i will check um i think what i will do is measure the 
um, filament voltage and then I will try and aim for the correct voltage there. That is one absolutely crappy fuse holder. I mean, th that's just probably the most lame I have seen in a long time. Okay, I figured it out. I was too fast to go absolutely crazy. Listen, this is the spare fuse. Here is the right fuse. Ooh, I was about to jump. So it doesn't matter if it looks absolutely crazy. But how about they right here? Spare fuse. So people who are not as fast as you can imagine. Ooh, that is some nasty. Let's see how the... See, oh, that is nice and clean. And it is 125. Okay. So far, so good. And that circuit board looks like it's in a pretty good shape. Old style mains connector, but of course I am pretty good equipped. Also with the type with chassis to ground, protective ground. You want to have protective ground on old stuff like this because you could easily have mains to chassis by some sort of an old leakage whatever right and you don't want to get killed today so of course you want to have a proper grounded power right so while we are looking at the beautiful internal parts here so that will be all the reference components for the different ranges and uh, i believe the measured signal goes back to the tube using this isolation transformer and it was hanging quite low and slow here because it's a nice little rubber what I did here is I'm I rotated just loosen the screws right and then rotated the two little rubber thingies right so now it's hanging the other way as it did the last 60 years so now see it is nice and straight nicely nicely vibration dampened but now it's nice and straight and not, it was before it was almost touching the bottom case and here we go yeah look at that all the different resistors here oh yeah you can see one mega 100k so it's probably 10k and then yes and 100 ohms down there right so that will be all the different factors on this one i really hope we don't have too much dirt in all the open switches because the yeah, as you can see that one there is also pretty open but right in here it's not so dirty because now we are looking from the bottom and all the dirt seems to be coming, as you can see here, from the top and not from the bottom. So it's raining dirt. <laughs> Man, after a little bit of cleanup, look at that. Can you recognize? It is the same unit. And I was more or less inside all little corners. So we got some germanium diodes down there and all that. Yeah, I even cleaned up the resistors down there. They was totally in slime and all that kind of stuff. And I also put in some contact cleaner inside the potentiometers and the contacts here. Look at that. And then wash them all with compressed air again. And some more little cotton butts and alcohol and everything even that switch is now nice and clean and the circuit board is nice and clean the only thing i didn't clean was this uh, spare fuse but i think now is the time to power this up and see if there is any kind of life or i need to repair it 
So let's do that. Power is on and mains is connected and I will slowly crank up the mains. So that is a hundred and it's only using three, three, four watts and I just continue all the way up. 220 volts and it's using 10 watts. So there's still a little bit of warmer. Let's turn off the light. I hope to see some green. Yes, 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 a million times yes. Look at that. Definitely there's life, right? So I am now in capacitance that is in the middle and it says times 10 nano farad so that means one here is 10 nanofarad right so if i go one down here is one okay so that is 4.7 nanofarad right there right this one is a 4.7 nano so let's let's do this plug it in let's see what happens here Oi, oi, oi. So here's my sensitivity. So the idea is, I was expecting, oh, look at that. So it's down here. So what I'm looking for is this. Did you see that? And then it goes up again. So I'm going for the lowest signal. Here you go. And here I can then crank up the sensitivity and aim for that one is 4.7. Isn't it right? What is this face doing? This is also some... Oh, this, this is interesting. Ooh, it goes even better, right? And then I can crank up hapa hapa. Look at that. Now it's even more. Oh, don't you just love it? And there's a really, really beautiful bride. Oh, that meter, I totally love it. It seems to be working. Yay, and it's really, really bright. Look at that, it's difficult to, to video, but it is so nice, lovely, lovely. Let's try some resistors and see if that is working. So here's a 4K7, and again it is times 1K down there, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5K, right? So probably I could do the same, crank up the gain here. So this is what I'm looking for, the smallest readout. And again, 4.7 seems to be working. Of course, what I'm looking for is uh, the higher ranges, because that will prove if everything is cleaned correctly, because leakage and all that kind of stuff. So let's uh, let's crank up the measurements here. Should be able to do 10 mega ohms. And the highest range is times one mega ohm. Oh, I don't know if, am I in here? Yeah. So this is a 4.7 uh, mega. And I am now in the highest. Look at that. Oop. It reads a little bit too much. But it reached, maybe it has something to do with this one. Aha! Uh -huh. In resistance, this is, has no effect. Only sensitivity. So it reads 4.9. But maybe that resistor is a little bit off, so... Nah. It was not the resistor, it's about 4.7. But anyway, it's not bad for a unit from 1965 being, I mean, 
this is quite close, right? And this is in the highest range. So here's a, an inductor. I don't know if it's really difficult to video this uh, screen because it just goes in total overdrive mode. I don't understand exactly why this is happening. Maybe I should try and lower it a little bit down to to this height here. Is that better? Okay, so let's let's pretend we don't know the value of this inductor, right? So let's start a few ranges away and then let's just pretend we don't know what's going on. See? Nothing. Okay, we go one range down. See? Nothing. And then, ooh, that's a little bit something. So, I mean, okay, we see something, but we don't see a peak. Okay, fantastic. Let's go one more down. And then, ooh, here is our peak. Because this one is one, um, one milli, Henry. And this unit is, of course, designed for very high values. Uh, one milli Henry to 10 Henrys per count here. So it's a hundred Henrys. So definitely um, filter inductors for tube equipment. So that is of course what it's used for. Oh, wow, it really, really works. So I think that is what I wanted to show you guys. And I hope you had a little bit of fun. And uh, please come back. Like and subscribe and tell all your friends, alright?